uh, pleasure or happiness, whether of human beings or of extraterrestrials, as morally good. And if we do make that uh, identification, then everything is permitted, because if it increases extraterrestrial pleasure sufficiently, virtually any sort of action can be justified. Secondly, I argued that if God does not exist, there are no objective moral duties. Why? Well, because even if there are objective values, there's no lawgiver to lay any moral obligations or duties upon us. Richard Taylor, whom I quoted before, invites us to imagine uh, a state of people living in a, a group of people living in a state of nature. And he says, let's suppose one of them kills another person and takes his goods. He writes, such actions, though injurious to their victims, are no more illicit or immoral than they would be if done by one animal to another. A hawk that seizes a fish from the sea kills it, but does not murder it. And another hawk that seizes the fish from the talons of the first takes it, but does not steal it. For none of these things is forbidden. And exactly the same considerations apply to the people we are considering. You see, in the absence of a divine lawgiver, there just is no source of moral obligation or moral duties. And I saw no answer to Professor Ten from Professor Tentra in the last speech on this issue. Finally, number three, there's no moral accountability on atheism. Remember, we saw that there's no reason to be moral, to adopt the moral point of view. Acts of self-sacrifice are particularly inept on the atheistic view. Why should I sacrifice my self-interest and even my life for others whom I don't even know? On the atheistic view, there can be no good reason for such a self-negating uh, course of action. By contrast, I argued that with theism, you have a morally bracing effect because of the presence of moral accountability. And as far as the response from Professor Tenkru here, all I saw was his statement that he admitted that no easy refutation of egoism is possible. In other words, he concedes the point that on atheism, there really isn't any moral accountability. Now, if you believe then with, with me that in fact, and with Professor Ten True actually, if you believe with both of us that there are objective moral duties, that there are objective moral values, then it follows logically from what I've argued tonight that God must exist. And therefore, it seems to me that on the one hand, we have theism offering us a sound foundation for the objective values that we all recognize and hold dear, for the moral duties that we all sense upon our hearts. And it gives us moral accountability. If we think that those things exist, then God must exist. On the other hand, if God doesn't exist, then I'll be quite honestly, even if I were not a Christian, I just don't see any reason on atheism to think that objective moral values, duties, or accountability would exist. And therefore, I think theism provides the more substantive and solid foundation for morality. Thank you, Professor Craig. Now, eight minutes each. Okay. Professor Tenshro, you're welcome. I, I kind of get the impression that we are losing contact somehow. I, I don't know whether there's a way of establishing it again. Um, obviously, I mean, we believe that we agree at least that there is an objective morality. Uh, I, I don't think that, that atheism provides any foundation for this belief. belief. So that must be a misunderstanding. I mean, uh, a, the, the non-existence of God is, is uh, quite as irrelevant to this discussion as the existence of God. You can't prove any, any moral um, theorems um, taking your point of departure in, in the atheist position. Um, and then over and over again, it seems that you, you ask for reasons to, to to believe reasons to, to act in all sorts of ways. And you think that God could be the reason. He told us to do this, so that's why we should do it. Or if we don't do it, then he will punish us, so that will be a reason to, to behave well. 
Well, I, I agree that, that this kind of, of God could exist. Besides my father, my, my uh, government, uh, the European Union, uh, the United Nations and so forth, uh, there could also be a God making up rules and obligations of this kind. And then, then I also admit that this would be a kind of objective morality, just in the same sense that, that, that uh, justice, our ordinary justice is objective. I mean, the police force is there and they, they grab you if you do the wrong thing. So it's, it's a kind of objective morality even, this divine morality then. But, but I wouldn't call it morality. I think it's just another instance of the same kind. I think that morality is very different. And it is self-contained in this manner, I've tried to indicate. And this also means that when you ask me how do we know that the pleasure, for example, is what really matters in the final analysis, I have to admit that I'm not that certain. I've done my best to, to, to defend this position, but there are many other positions uh, around in the discussion. Some people say that what really matters is that, that the desires you have are satisfied. And there are also persons saying that no matter whether you are, feel happy and, and, and have your desires satisfied, the important, the crucial thing is that you achieve something in life. And they are all utilitarians. They are all utilitarians, and they disagree on these kinds of subtle points. And then, of course, utilitarianism is just one possible position among many others, and this non-speciesist uh, version of utilitarianism that I have defended. Um, but, but my point is not that I can prove my position with reference to the non-existence of God. Uh, and I think that uh, we have to acknowledge that there are duties of this rather different kind than the ones we know from, from when our father told us to do certain things or when the police is coming to catch us if we don't abide by the rules. There are rules of a very different order. And, and moral philosophers agree that there are moral duties, even if there, are, there is no one who, who, who tells us to do certain things. But they disagree, of course, about how we should conceive of these duties. I mean, Immanuel Kant think that, the German philosopher think that, that they are self-evident to us somehow, and they are imposing themselves upon it. We can realize that we have them, but, but there is no lawgiver imposing them uh, on us. We can just realize that the kind of creatures we are, we have to behave in those ways. It's self-evident to us. Uh, other moral thinkers say that, well, the obligations are there because certain individuals have rights. So that's why you are not allowed to do certain things or must do certain things because otherwise you will violate the rights of other people. And then there are those who, like me, think that, that the source of these obligations are really what happens to people when you act one way or the other. So that gives us obligations, even, even, I mean, utilitarianism is a morality making very hard demands on us. It's sometimes rejected only on this account that it makes too hard demands on us. And you ask me, well, is there any reason I can give for sacrificing my life, for example, uh, for a higher course, if God does not exist? Well, I think it's a poor reason that someone told me to do so. And I think it's a poor reason that someone would, would punish me if I don't. I think I have a better reason. The reason is simply that this is a way of maximizing the sum total of well-being in the universe, impartial manner of doing this. It's a heavy demand on us that this morality makes, but, but I have come to the conclusion that this is the morality that is closest to the truth, at, at least. But again, other people think otherwise, and there are all these competing hypotheses about what constitutes really the, the objective, uh, the sound objective moral ground for passing these kinds of judgment. But, but there are all sorts of ideas about how we can answer this question. Why sacrifice my life? Because otherwise I will violate certain people's rights, for example. Because otherwise I will not maximize the sum total of well-being in the universe. There are some creatures that will suffer because I do not sacrifice my life, and 